this was 2017, and in 2017, smartphones accounted for 85% of all photographs. And now it's about 95%. With very digital cameras even going away. So this, as, as, as a social force, and also as something that massively increases the amount of material we have, Smart. It's almost hard to co comprehend, but this, uh, you can see the trend, and that's only continuing. Now, I guess this was just, I had this idea. The artist studio recognized Pablo Picasso in his studio, and what do you see? No technology whatsoever. This is 1956, one year before his big retrospective in MoMA. Anyway, uh, everything he did really through his hands or through his materials. Now we move forward. Nora Studio, Refit Anadol, is emerging as a major digital artist. And everything he does is with computational models and tools, generative art and algorithms. And for this, he had, this is him and his. A studio he has a, at the at the moment he was there with a massive work of art that was floor to ceiling with dynamic images that changed constantly. So if you look at this, this is 2003. That was 1956. The change that's happened in that short amount of time in the artist in the studio and these this. From Picasso to Anadol is, is really stunning. What happened? Oh, I, I hit the wrong thing. Sorry. Now, here I just wanted to point out that there are people out there, like I call this computational seeing becomes more human like a new open AI project. Jan LeCun, he was one of the three Turing Award people from the, uh, in, in 2018. And uh, he has a new theory now. Why is this all this stuff popping up? <laughs> what is that? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah okay. slides. Yes, exactly. yeah. Is, is there, they've invaded. Okay, I don't know why this has to happen. Redacted. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm sorry, to, but anyway, he's, he's trying to make AI more human-like, and uh, he's, been, he's been working on this since 2018, with, he's responsible for a lot of the advanced image recognition, and his thing is called Image Joint Embedding Predictive Architecture, so it moves away from generative, and then you can't see it, but the, the other thing is the self supervised learning from his observation you see this is a, a little baby here you see the real baby and the, the robot baby so what he observes is that learning so much learning happens before you really know what learning is you're just developing your thinking but it's self-supervised and we're appreciating this model of learning more and more and it's so it's image it's seeing so again, getting back to the digital lens, the eye, what you see, and so much of what an artist does is through their eye and the thinking eye. And that's what babies do through observation. So that's a big deal. And this is, I can't even read my poem. There's so much stuff on this. <laughs> Make it small or do something. I can't. Oh, okay. Well, can you just make the slides smaller I, I, like that? Okay. You so th I, this is my little poem. <laughs> and I, I did this, this little uh, image here. It is something I did on, in Dolly too. So seeing the world in bits and pieces. Seeing the world in bits and pieces as if life ceases Meaning imagination decreases, sadness of the mind and decline. 
knowing's uncertain, pull back the curtain, just mathematical symbols, remains of life on earth. Covered in digital dust when seeing's a must, blinded by digital light in the universe or metaverse, will things get worse? Beyond bits and bots, memory stops, everything's in flames, let go of the rain speeding towards cyberspace, leaving no trace. Will love still exist, already missed? Thanks. I have the panel now. The panel is going to be out there. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I just want to point out here, you see Leonardo AI and Mid Journey, it's supposed to be Mid Journey 5, already how things are changing. So in the beginning with the generative art, yeah, that's it. That's that, oh, that you're really cheating. It's everybody else's images or in all the thing. But with these two programs, the advanced, the advanced, you as an artist can take your image. Your, it can be a photograph, it can be anything, a drawing, and you can base your model on that. So now what you're doing is really coming from the artist. It changes that feeling of you know, it's with a copyright. And then you build your model on your own work. That's a new option. You have that option both with Leonardo AI and Mid Journey 5. And that's just happened in the last, I don't know, tiny period. And so what's happening now is you're getting more and more participants, entrepreneurs and people entering the creative space here and, and changing the tools so that the tools really are much more creative and artist space. So I think that's very exciting. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna end it there. Oh, yes. I'm ending a little early. <laughs> Thank you, Paige. <laughs> That's my avatar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have to discuss in here, have to throw out questions. Somebody was asking a question. Oh, yes, someone had asked that at least. Yeah, yes. right. It's a bit too close. I don't know if it's boring or not, but the ISBN number. So Graham was talking about self-publishing. Yep. I think it's a really interesting way of putting things together. But what about you know when you when you work with a normal publisher, they sort out your ISBN and they send it to all the libraries. With, so, uh, with Blurb, you can have an ISBN number. I've chosen not to on this because this is really just my my children legacy project. But yes, you can have you can have it an, an ISBN number. You can pay extra for them to take away the blurb logo. And you can sell them on Amazon. Fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, it's just an interesting question. Thank you. Common. Graham, I think, I mean, what, what you said is very interesting and it works for photography. I work in media arts, I teach media arts. And for example, I started as a net artist. Most of my work is gone. It's no longer there anymore because Flash stopped and because Apple wouldn't support Flash. And, and I always say to my students, we don't have we don't have art if if we have a power outage. Yeah. Well, well, I'm very glad you said that because it, it, it you know, although I was talking photography because basically I'm a photographer, that's was, was, was what's written on the tin. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, um, I think it's relevant to every researcher in this room in one way or another. Uh, so yes, thank you for that. I have QuickTime files from the 1990s that QuickTime can't open, but VLC will. Yes, of course. As long as you, you know, and I'm lucky that VLC exists. Yeah, some people are migrating things yeah. and doing like the hardest museums and, yeah, but. And when you have to, it's like a whole profession would be just migrating things. Right. People would just, and yeah. But I was going to say, I know that at your library is a great example of permanent archiving is because they have the Edward Curtis um, prints, which are all, Photograph your mm. and photograph your is absolutely right. absolutely I, I, carbon I, printing. You know, I didn't mention carbon printing particularly, but uh, the very first color photograph was based on carbon printing yeah. and dropping just carbon atoms on paper, which is what carbon printing is, is is another thousand year process. I, I worked. I was a curator at the Library of Congress at the Dayton C. Miller Collection, which is about two thousand musical instruments, but with all the documentation, and they had. 
Dayton C. Miller was a physicist. He worked with Einstein, et cetera. He, he had all his images on glass plates. Yeah. Of course, they do break. That's one thing you have to be yeah. careful about. But uh, you, you have the expectation has changed because there's so many more participants now. So at one time, you didn't have that many artists who you were, or writers or the yeah. scope has increased. It's, just, it's almost unfathomable and it's getting more because the tools allow more players. More people are thinking, them, thinking of themselves as creative artists. Mm -hmm. and that role is, is, is not the, it doesn't have the exclusive uh, exclusivity in one hand. So our, the task is, is much greater now I mean, each individual. And when you look at archives, as I've worked in many different archives, what gets saved is really sort of it. So it has already floated to the top of the trend. And that's what museums and archives is. But now you're getting individual individuals who are interested in the long preservation of their material. And that also creates new types of needs, and new, new techniques. Yeah, how do you feel about ceramics as a way of archiving? We have more material culture from the Akkadians and the Sumerians than we do um, about even like six years ago. The only thing with ceramics is that it's probably a smaller lifeboat in the Titanic, in my pigment ink printing, because it, um, it takes up more space in museum. One of the... Um, when we handed over the Henry Tomp project as a big pile of pigment ink prints to English Heritage, the head of English Heritage, who was on to the museum that night, said, damn, we were hoping to make a bit of smaller coal store. Mm -hmm. Now, with what you're doing, we're going to need a bigger coal store in Swindon. So in the same way, um, you know, it takes up lots of space, but yeah, you know, I mean, stones last a long time. Like I think glass. stained glass, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, a, there's, there's, there's all sorts of things in things like that, of course, but uh, if it, this is, um, because you can do books like this, that uh, actually are this sort of technology that I was talking about for University College Oxford, it's a cheap, quick way for anyone in this room to actually preserve their research here and now. You can, I mean, okay, I've got a I've got a fabulous book designer who I pay money to do these because I want them to look beautiful so that my unborn great great grandchildren don't throw it away. But at the same time, um, you can use templates um, on, on uh, and other things if you're not a great designer. But it is a, just a great way of making sure that your your work is preserved and possibly it encourages people to put it into a library somewhere and 